Today I am sharing six tips for beginners working in charcoal. Tip number one is paper choice. If you are working in charcoal and you are not getting the results you want, if the charcoal is not sticking well enough, you can't get enough layers, it very well may be the paper you're using. My favorite lately has been the Canson Me 10s. I work on the rough side and you can get this in so many colors. My favorites are the gray tones, but they also come in lots of, I mean, just about every color. They're really nice to work on. And the reason that I go with the rough side on this is it gives more for the charcoal to grip to. If you're using your regular mixed media paper, it sort of works, but you are limited in how many layers you can get. With the Canson Me 10s, when you're using, or any paper that has a more rough side that's intended for like charcoal or pastels, there's so much more for that pencil or the charcoal to grip to. So it sticks better and is going to allow you to get more layers. So it can make your life much easier. Now I do want to point out with the black paper, look at how this changes color depending on the angle. It looks so super dark in darker rooms, but when you get the light hitting it just right, there's a bit of a glare to it. So it is going to shift color a bit. If you are somebody who's going to sell your work, I'd like to take multiple photos to show the customer so they can see that this one type of the, the black paper will look very, very different under different lighting. Now that's true to an extent on all paintings and drawings, but this black paper can go from being pitch black, like you'll see in my finished photo, to having a really high glare to it to where it's almost a dark gray. Tip number two is on the pencils themselves. I used all of these pencils in this project, but if you look at all of these and you're like, do I use a hard? Do I use medium? Do I use soft? When do I use what? If that starts feeling confusing to you, simplify it. Only use two. I would, in this case, go with the soft and just the white. That's it. Those two pencils are really all you, or actually that's extra soft, but those are all you need to complete a piece. So if you do feel overwhelmed with too many options of the different values of charcoal, simplify, go with just these two. Tip number three, we're gonna talk about blending. You've got several different types of blending tools you can use. There are the blending stumps, which are my favorites. You've got soft tools. You could even use Q-tips, or for those of you outside of the US, I think you call them cotton swabs. You could take a piece of paper towel wrapped around your finger or wad it up into a little stick, and that would work. Ideally, don't use your fingers. This is something that you see people do, especially on TV, where they're being all creative and they're using their hands. The problem is the oils on our skin, that can leave marks on the paper, and it's also not archival. Turns out, people people oils, not good for artwork. So it's better if you can keep your, art, your hands off the work as much as possible. I have a sheet of glassine under my hand there to keep my hand from touching the paper. You could use a mall stick. You could use just a scratch piece of paper. Now, I will warn you, a regular scratch piece of paper has the potential to still smudge your work, whereas glassine, nothing will stick to it. So you are really minimizing the risk of anything smudging. And in a case like this, where I wanna leave the black background showing through or whatever color paper I've, I've used, I wanna keep that clean, glassine is definitely the way to go. Now here you see me using a blending stump. This is what I did all of my shading with, or blending I should say, on this piece. Something you want to avoid when you are blending, Let's say you've got your, in this case, well, you go with the black, that's the extra soft pencil again, I've got my white, and I wanna smudge those two together. What often will happen is people will make a couple of blending strokes and think, wow, this looks great. If three strokes with the blending tool look good, then 50 must look even better. No, less is better. If you over blend, you end up with one medium color. You don't have the contrast. And when you're working in charcoal, that's one of the great things. You're getting this great contrast. We really wanna play that up. But in that case, you saw I start getting this just horrible, everything's gray. So less blending, of, less blending strokes, I should say, is going to generally be the way to go. You want to make sure that you're keeping your lights and darks. Watch as I keep blending and blending and blending. I lose that definite light and dark. We'll even go more. See how I get this medium gray now? And I don't have the darkest dark and the lightest light. And that's really the thing that's gonna make the biggest difference in your work. It's not about having the most perfect technique or the perfect drawing, while those do play a role. It really has more to do with your contrast, your values. Are your darks dark enough, your lights light enough? That is the thing that is going to make your work look more realistic. People have a tendency to get hung up on picking the perfect color when they're working in colored pencil or acrylics or whatever. They want the perfect color. They think that's what will make their work look realistic. No, 
it's your values. Dark's dark enough, light's light enough. So don't over blend. We don't want to lose those super bright whites or super dark darks. Now, what if you did over blend and you're like, well, heck, what do I do now? That's now I have, I don't have dark darks. Charcoal is so forgiving. It is one of my favorite mediums for beginners. Just go over it, go over the area and just don't over blend the next time through. So you can rework an area again and again. And this is especially easy if you are working with a paper that has a bit more tooth to it, like the Can Send Me Tens. Before we move on to my most important tip, if you are watching this thinking, I would like to follow along in real time, I've got that for you. If you head over to Patreon for as little as $4 a month, you get access to all of my longer tutorials. I have been making these lessons for seven years. So you get seven years of access, $4 a month. That's insane. But because I have so many lessons and I've been doing them for so long, you get a huge value from this. I have a new lesson every single week. I work in multiple mediums. If you wanna head over and check out my Patreon video library, you can look at that on my website to see what's available or just head over to patreon.com slash to sign up. There are multiple tiers with various rewards available for you there. Okay, on to my biggest tip. When you are working, and this doesn't matter what medium you are working in, when you are working on something, look at your reference photo. You're really gonna, going to pay attention to that reference photo because I promise you, I don't care how many roses you've looked at, if you try drawing it from memory, it's not gonna look like this. It's gonna look like a cartoon. If you want your work to look realistic, you are going to work from a reference photo. And there's this weird thing out there that people, I see this a lot with younger artists, they feel that in order to be good, you have to work from your memory. Photorealism means you're working from a photograph. You've got photographic references. Now that does not mean you need to copy everything exact, but you are looking at a reference. So as you look at that reference, and this is really what this tip is about, look at the abstract shapes. If I look at this as a rose, the shapes I'm drawing, each of these petals, it doesn't look like a flower petal. It looks like a weird shape. What you've got to do in order to make your work start looking more realistic, if this is something you've been struggling with, you've got to start teaching your brain and your eyes to see what's there. You, what happens is our brain is like, I know what a rose looks like. I don't even need to pay attention to that reference photo. And then we draw something and it's, I don't, it's cabbage, maybe. It's definitely not a rose. But if you pay attention to the shapes and you break it up into one little area, look as I work through here how I focus on one petal, one little zone at a time. I'm not trying to do the whole rose at once sketching on this pedal and then over on this pedal, I'm focusing on one small area at a time as I work. And this is going to help you to pay attention to those details without being overwhelmed. I mean, especially in the case of a rose, there are so many folds, there's so many petals. If we start rushing through that, we miss things and it just kind of ends up being a mess. So break it up into one little zone and just focus on that zone. One of the things that I used to do for my students that struggled with this is I would take a piece of paper cut out maybe one square inch, two square inches, and do the same for their reference photo. And that is all they could see. That is all they could look at. And it's really just an abstract shape at that time. But in the end, their entire piece would come together and look super realistic, realistic, even though that was something, you know, creating realistic work was something that they had struggled with in the past. If you can start forcing yourself to break it down into little zones and paying attention to these little details, it will make such a difference in your work. For my last tip, what project should you start to? If you're new to any medium, maybe you've been drawing in colored pencil and you're just getting started with charcoal, no matter what medium you're coming from or if you're just completely new to art, I almost always will start students off with a rose. You may think, well, I'm not really interested in flowers. That's kind of boring. The thing with the rose is you learn a lot as far as creating dimension. You've got a lot of curves. You've got where that flower petal folds out. You're learning to create these this depth in the work and get getting that three-dimensional look. Let's say you like orchids better. The problem with orchids like Phalaenopsis, they are very flat. Or a daisy. Again, we're kind of dealing with something that is, is more flat. It's not that they're not fun to draw, but I feel like you'll learn more from creating the curves and folds in a rose and the details in a rose than you will from many other subjects. Now, once you get the hang of this, and I'm not saying forever draw roses, draw a couple of them and move on to whatever subject you like, but what you learn from drawing a rose, a simple rose, is going to be applied to almost every other subject. If I'm going, if I have a student that wants to learn portraits, 
favorites. We are definitely starting with roses. Look at the way that that petal folds down. You've got to be able to create that with shading and understand how to hit the lighting right because when you're drawing a face, let's say a nose and it needs to curve into the cheek, you've got to learn how to blend all of this and you can learn that with a rose. Now, why not just start with a portrait or whatever other subject? Because it's harder. It's just more, it can be very discouraging if you're new because not only are you now learning a new medium, you're also working on a harder subject. With a rose, you can completely miss a flower petal or change a flower petal and it still looks like a rose. No big deal. So in the end, you feel proud of yourself. You completed something that looks amazing. On the flip side, let's say you're working on a portrait and the eye, one of the eyes is a little too open, a little too, like the lines just off a slight, slight amount. You completely change what that person looks like. So you're so dependent when working on portraits and working on things like that on getting everything more exact than you are with a rose. A rose, you miss a petal, no big deal. A person, you miss a nostril, everything just went downhill. So a rose is very forgiving. In the end, you get that big win. You finish with something you're very, very proud of, and I feel like this is going to help you to be encouraged to keep going forward. If you start with something where you're almost setting yourself up to fail, it's hard to feel encouraged to keep going. So I think it's important to start out with something that teaches you the necessary things. I don't want you to just sit there shading circles. I don't think you're learning enough from that. We don't want to be that basic. But in this case, we can learn how to create the dimension, how to create detail, how to control things without having so much pressure where every little thing needs to be perfect. And it's not forever. I don't want you to stay a beginner forever. So we want to jump into the advanced stuff fairly early on, but at least get a couple of these drawn out where you're working on a, su a subject that is more simple so that you get that, that win, that feeling of, oh my gosh, look how awesome what I just created is. So here is my finished drawing. Now, another thing I want to point out, look at the contrast. Darks are super dark. The lights are super light. When you choose your reference photo, try to find one. If you're going to be working in black and white, ideally find a photo that has that high contrast. And if you find a photo that doesn't, you can take it into Photoshop or Lightroom or whatever photo editing app you have, something on your phone. Hype up the contrast. Look at what a difference it can make and then use that as your reference photo. I also recommend whenever you're working in black and white, take that photo into, if it's a color photo, make it black and white in whatever photo app you want, and then go ahead and again, just adjust your values. Because usually just making it black and white won't be enough. It'll be too bland. So you're going to have to hype up the contrast in order to make it look interesting. But definitely go for something that has very, very dark darks, very light lights. I think that that is one of the most amazing looks when you're working in charcoal. And if you want to follow along with me, pencil stroke by pencil stroke, real time, you can head over to Patreon, patreon.com slash LaCree to get access to this and all of my longer lessons now. Have you subscribed yet? If not, I have a handy button right there. It's round, has an orange arrow going towards it. If you click on that, that'll help you to keep up to date with all of my new art videos every single week. I also have a new series starting where every week I will have a brand new real time beginner painting lesson. So I'm really excited to get started with those. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification button because YouTube is terrible about letting people know when new content goes live.